Welcome back to Thistle Hill Farmstead. My name's Todd, and today we're gonna to do some maintenance on our little golf cart here that we call Bessie. It's an easy go ST golf cart, and today I'm gonna to do an oil change, a spark plug change, and a filter change. So I hope you find it interesting and helpful. So here's our kit with everything in it we need. Uh, I got this off of eBay, and you can see it comes with uh, the oil filter and a new o-ring it comes with a new air filter and two spark plugs yeah there we go and a new fuel filter so we're going to do all of those little maintenance items today on the golf cart so the first thing i want to do is uh, just get access to the engine so i'm just going to take a bungee cord and i'm going to pull up the seat and bungee it up and hold it there so that I have access to the engine. Now the seat will lift off if you want, but I don't need to lift it off. I can get to everything I need just like that. So our first task is to change the air filter. Now the air filter is located inside of this air filter housing here. And the way you access it, there's two clips here and you just loosen those clips. And then this exterior piece will slide off and you see the air filter in there. So we pull our old air filter out and you see it's not too dirty. It has some uh, grass seeds and some things in it, but we'll replace that with a new one. Here's the new one. Pull this out and we'll compare the two. So you can see the new one is uh, quite a bit cleaner. And then we just slide that up in there and you'll feel it uh, slide on to a little extrusion here so you want to make sure it's in there good and then all we do is put the cap back on and we should be good to go slide our cap back on re-clip it in and that's all there is to it now the next thing i want to do is change the spark plugs. And there's two spark plugs located right behind the uh, valve cover on the engine. And they are a 13 16 uh, spark plug. So you'll need a 13 16 socket. This is actually a spark plug socket. So I'm not sure if you can see in here, but there's a little piece of foam in here that uh, goes around the porcelain part of your spark plug so that it prevents damage to the spark plug. Okay, so we'll need to pull off the spark plug wires and I'll pull the plug wires off. There's one. And uh, you wanna keep these in their proper alignment, but you can see this wire is much shorter, so there's no way to really get them mixed up. There's no way that one will go to the other one. So just move those out of the way. Let's take these out. Take a look at those. Now they have quite a bit of, quite a bit of carbon on them. I think um, this is running a little rich. Uh, that's why it has so much carbon on it because uh, when we do drive it, sometimes you can actually uh, smell when it cuts off, smell the gas a little bit. Uh, and it needs a, a little bit of adjustment on the carburetor. Oh yeah, look at that one. It is really gummed up. Oh, there we go. That's better. Yeah, see how much carbon is on that, uh, that plug there. So it's definitely running rich. Uh, but you see, these are the new plugs. They look much better than the old ones that were really gummed up. So let's pop those in. OK, 
Okay, now we get them a little tight. And you don't want to tighten these too much. Just snug them up is all they need. You see, I'm just basically doing that with one finger. Okay. All right, good enough. We want to replace our spark plug wires. And you'll feel that snap, snap on when it's on there. There you go. And then you put this other one here. There you go. You, I don't know if you heard that one snap. And while you're doing this, you might want to inspect the spark plug wires just to make sure that uh, there's no damage to them. Everything looks good on those. So the next job will be to replace the uh, fuel filter. Here's the fuel filter. And um, I have the new one. And the way this works is you want to make sure that you uh, place it in the proper flow and if you look on your fuel filter many of them there you go you can see that little arrow on there many of them have an arrow that will show you the direction of the fuel flow and if you um, don't know the direction of your fuel flow what you can do is look for obviously the fuel tank this is the fuel tank here's the line coming out of the fuel tank going to the fuel pump and then down into the carburetor. So that tells you the direction of the fuel flow is from the tank and the pump this way. So that's the way you'll want to put in your new um, filter. And you can look and see how the old filter was in, but um, you might not want to trust. You never want to trust someone else. Make sure you do it right. So this is a pretty simple task. You just need to loosen these two clamps that are here and slide the uh, fuel filter off. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these. I have a pan below here in case I, uh, any of the gas leaks out. And you may wanna wear some gloves for this. Uh, I'm not that concerned. What I did was uh, just took a pair of pliers and uh, squeeze this clamp together and pull it back off of the uh, stem. And I'm gonna do the same side uh, the same thing on this side, just squeeze the clamp, pull it back off, and then you should be able to slide these hoses off. They may be tight, so let's see. You want to be careful not to break the filter because it is plastic and it could break. And you don't want to tear up your fuel line either. Let's see, you just gotta be patient. There you go, that one came off pretty easy. Yep, see a little bit of fuel running out there. There we go. Uh, let's see, just pop that up there so that the fuel doesn't run out. Let's see if I can get this one. Maybe easier to do with my hand. Let me get another pair of pliers instead of those needle nose. Okay, so I uh, got me a little paper towel here. I got a different pair of pliers. It's got a little bit larger. There we go. A little bit larger grip on it. So you just work that one out. There we go. And like I said, the fuel just ran out of that. So now we take this and again look for your arrow here. Slide this on. Now I see that fuel line is getting a little bit uh, cracked on the end. You can see it there, but I think it'll be fine. There's really no pressure per se on this. And then I'm going to slide the other side on. There we go. So we've got that on there. And then all I have to do is slide my clamps back up. Clamp number one. And 
clamp number two. There we go. All right. And then when we crank that over, we should see that, uh, that fuel pump in there and fill that up. I have the cart in neutral now, so let's see if it fuel is pumping into the filter. Now our last chore is to do the oil change. And it came with a little oil filter, which is kind of a metal filter. Here it is. And it's located down on the lower part of the engine. It came with a new uh, O-ring also. So we'll replace, we'll drain the oil, replace the oil filter, and uh, then refill it with oil. So we're underneath the cart now, and here is the oil filter. It's on the driver's side of the engine, and it has three bolts that hold it in, and those are uh, 10 millimeter bolts. I have my oil pan underneath and ready to go to catch any oil that will come out, and there will be oil coming out of this once we crack it loose. I may have to get a, uh, a wrench for this top one. Nope, I was able to get it. Okay, let's see what we get here. <clears throat> well, that was tight. Okay, you see the oil already starting to come out. Now, I drove the cart in here, so it's a little warm, which is always good. It helps you to, uh, to thin up the oil a bit, and uh, so things will drain out nicely. three bolts out now let's slide it out just a little bit let it drain now I'll go ahead and pull it out there you go and we'll discard this one uh, because it uh, it's used you don't you reuse them and now you see the O-ring is in here, so I will pull that O-ring out. I have to get a pick to do that, so I'll be right back. Well, somehow I lost the video of me pulling that O-ring out. But what I did was took a small pick, uh, like a dental pick, and pulled that O-ring out of the um, case there, and then replaced it with the new O-ring and then basically slid the new filter in. So that's what we'll pick up with me putting the bolts in the new filter. Now, I really should have done this before I stuck the screen up there, but what I like to do is write the date of my oil change on here too. So this is 7 to 22. There we go. And that way, if there's any doubt, I can always take a look and see when it was changed last. So now let's tighten these bolts back up. Okay, so I've got them snugged up now. Let's just do a little tight on them. There we go. And again, these don't have to be super tight. You have your O-ring in there that is uh, 
Well, that one wants to be a little bit of a pain because it uh, is close into uh, that little side piece there, so the socket's not going on very well. Yeah. Okay, let me tighten these up. <clears throat> See if I can get the open end up in here to tighten this one. We go okay all tight you might notice I've got some uh, this is the brake cable that's hanging down back here I'm gonna zip tie this up I'm not sure if it has uh, just fallen down I don't know it's uh, connected over here with a, a tie strap so I'm not sure why this one is just hanging down like it is but I'm gonna put a zip tie on it to hold it up so that it doesn't get caught in anything some bigger zip ties too. These are kind of small. Then they might break, but I have some bigger ones uh, that I will uh, go and get for this. But this will keep it up for now. Yeah, that's pretty good. So it doesn't get caught on anything to find some thicker zip ties so I'm gonna cut these little thin ones that I had put on here off yeah, leave those thicker ones there I think that'll do better at holding that up and there you go you can see it's it's up now and I'm gonna also like I said put one up here to hold these together we drive this thing in the woods a lot so uh it's always going over sticks and things, so I don't want this stuff to get caught and pulled out. Uh, so that's good to have it. I wish, and maybe I will drill a hole in this piece here, and so I have something to zip tie to because this has no holes in it. So I was able to find a way to get a zip tie around that other. So that looks nice. Now everything's kind of buttoned up under here. Not going to get drug off when we go through the woods with anything. So let's uh, let's put some oil back in this thing. I'm going to wipe off around the uh, oil inlet a little bit so that. Uh, we don't get anything down in there when we take the cap off. All right, let me get my funnel and the oil and we'll fill her up. Okay, so now all we have to do is put the oil back in. I got my funnel here and I've got my oil. Now, the only thing I don't like about these big jugs of oil is you really never know how much you're putting in quart-wise. 
So I just guzzle some in and stop and check. Okay, let's check it and see what we got. And it's not even on the dipstick yet. So we need a little more in there. So let's keep going. Let's try that. Oh, perfect. It's right up on the full mark, so let me start it up. Let it run just a bit. Got it in neutral. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. All right, it's right on the full mark. So that's excellent. Okay. So she's all done. So that's it. That's changing the oil the plugs and the air filter and the fuel filter in this EasyGo ST golf cart. So I hope that was informational for you and I hope you learned a little bit of something. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel a lot. And remember to subscribe to keep up to date with all of our videos.